Aaron here from Departures Capital. We're here a little bit early. We're here eight minutes early, so I figured I'm here. Why don't we just start the stream? Um, so thank you for tuning in. It's the morning. And uh, we're seeing the markets dip a little bit into the red. So we'll get straight into things. I just need to pull up the chat, post a link into our Discord group for all of our members. And then I want to review one quick funny meme right before we get into everything and what's what's popping. What's up, Levon? What's up, Lucifiel? Kyle, good morning. How's everybody today? Jimmy Santana. Good morning, Doug. What's up, Spartacus? I saw you in here at uh, 9.15, Spartacus, so that's awesome. Or, no, no, 9.45. 9.45. So thanks for waiting. I figured you guys were in here, so I might as well just start it up. Oh yeah, so look it. We've got a really funny meme from uh, Scott. It's just a Cam Batley and me meme. Thought it was kind of funny. So um, that's our meme of the day. And then let me just quickly go to uh, YouTube. And then we're just gonna post the link to our stream in the Discord group. And then we'll get straight into all the Movers, please don't be too loud. Okay. All right, so we'll give that a quick little pause and say we're live. So we are seeing ACB tread water around 12 bucks. Wall Street's lower as global growth fears persist. Stocks are lower on Monday, weighed by technology shares as investors worried about global, glo global growth. The Dow fell 0.05%, so it's not a heavy red day yet, but it uh, looks like the sell-off is accelerating. So we'll see if we continue lower today. The S&P broke 2,800, and it looks to be heading a little bit lower. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that. Star Maker, Jacob, Zach, what's going on? What's up with MacArthur Minerals? Sammy in the house. What's up, Sammy? What do you think of BIOS? I'll take a look at those in a little bit. I'm just looking at the indexes first. I wanna see how things are looking right now. So yeah, like I said, the sell-offs accelerating a bit. We're down 0.45% now, so we're almost down a full half a percent. Smart. The markets have been trading for about 25 minutes, so. I guess we'll see how low we go. Hi, came into like, okay, bye-bye, can't watch you in class, no problem. Thank you, boy, you trash. CRD, I'll go into the moon, woohoo. All right, so first thing I wanna do is check in with our portfolios, our different watch lists, and then we'll get into some individual stocks that we're taking a look at. First, we always like to start it off with the cannabis stock portfolio. So we are seeing quite a few stocks in the green, believe it or not. And it's a mixed day. The biggest decliner is down only 5.88%. Viridium Pacific. Cali's down 5%. 48 North down again. Even Co. Namaste. Afria. FSD Pharma. 22.5 cents. 360 risk down flat on the day. Canopy and ACB down about 1%. Alkaline Water is declining again but not by much, still looking still looking for that one around 3.30, 3.40. What's up, Norbert? CRDL, I'll take a look at CRDL, ACB, somewhat, not much happening on the markets. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, hello from Ontario. Hi, Diane. It's not too big of, it's not, there's not that many moves happening today, but we are seeing a couple stocks in the green, Ceneva, green growth, crops in the, oh, crops down again. That's weird. Oxy's in the green, MedMen's in the green again. Yeah, that's what I like to see. We're seeing MedMen up another 3.5% to $4.50 Canadian, so that's nice to see. MedMen's, MedMen had a really good announcement with that $250 million announcement but I mean they just um, 
It was a crappy day for that announcement because the markets sold off so heavily. We're finally seeing Medben recover some of those gains. Let's zoom in here a little bit closer for Medben. So we saw a pretty big gap up. We saw a gap up from about a buck, four dollars and ten cents, all the way up to four seventy almost. But now it looks like Medmen's can resuming that uptrend. So I really hope Medmen can get to like five bucks. Good morning, right on time. Yes, sir, always on time. Anthony Tottenham. Good morning. TRQ keep on dropping. Yes, sir. Let's take a look at the copper stocks. So global growth is obviously gonna weigh on copper a little bit more, but Turquoise Hill's not dropping today. Turquoise Hill is up one. Is Oh, wait a second. Maybe my quotes are a little bit slow. I'm gonna assume my quotes are a little bit slow. Let me take a look at the, let me take a look at Turquoise Hill on the American side. Turquoise Hill's down 1%. All right, yeah, I want it to keep on dropping. We'll see how low we can go, but definitely looking to, definitely looking at this stock very closely. Um, by the looks of it, I just made a video on copper, and this is one, it's at multi, multi, multi-year lows, like 2009 lows. This is when I like to pick up stocks like this. Still a multi-billion dollar company. So, as you guys can see, Turquoise Hill hit a low of a, right in and around this level, right, right around 2008, 2009. And then it started to just absolutely skyrocket. So, we could see a little bit more downside in the cards, but this is one I'd buy incrementally. The stream started at 9.52. So I'm early, you're not late, don't worry about it. <laughs> I just figured there was a bunch of people in here waiting around, might as well get started. We didn't cover too much, we just talked about the markets being in the red. So guys, we're gonna look at our defensive stock portfolio, but the first thing I want to do, I just quickly want to see how many people we're at. We're almost at 400 people. So we're trying to hit 400 people for our Discord group. I'm just gonna quickly post a link there in the chat. So if you're new to the stream and you want to join our Discord group, the link's there in the chat. Almost at 400 people, I believe. Let's see how many we're at. 34 plus 41. So we're getting close to 375. We're at like 375 now. So, anyways. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that too. Don't forget to hit the like button, guys. It's right here. Smash that like button. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so next thing we're looking at. I want to look at Trilogy Metals. Tril oh, shoot. Trilogy Metals is up 7%, but this stock's been on too much of a run for me. I wouldn't buy this one it's too close to its 52-week highs or basically retesting 52-week highs. But the momentum remains. What's up, Peter Easer? Easerwood? Easerwood? Good morning. Um, yeah, closely watching Turquoise Hill Resources. This one, I really... Would love to see it come down a tiny bit more, but it's tempting right now. Very tempting. So defensive 2019. This is our defensive stock portfolio for 2019. Let's see what's in the green. Centric Health Corporation, Amira, Atlantic Power, Chartwell Retirement Residences, Fortis, Hydro One, Northwest Healthcare. As you guys can see, for the most part, this portfolio has been outperforming the markets by a long shot obviously stocks like brookfield real estate a little more susceptible to a sell-off 
as we've sold off from 17 bucks all the way down to 16 and a half, but not too big of a pullback. It's still fairly defensive and it yields 7.95%. This is Brookfield Real Estate Services, so a little more exposure to the consumer sector in terms of real estate transactions and all that kind of stuff. Good morning, Kyle. Wow, 100 people already. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button as we dive into the stock markets and see what the heck is going on here. Let's see. So, stocks for 2019. This is a little bit broader of a portfolio that I put together. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Gluskin Chef's up 28%. I don't know what is happening, but we own this stock and it's been a crap show for the past, like, forever. And that's very good news. Let's see what the hell happened. Wow, those are surprises that I like. I think they got bought out by the looks of it. Oh, next to buy wealth manager Gluskin Chef in a $445 million deal. Wow, that's very impressive. Gluskin Chef will continue to be led by the existing leadership team and operate under its brand. So, Onyx Corporation is acquiring management, wealth management from Gluskin Chef in a $445 million deal, 1425 per share. Wow. I'm happy. Hit that cash button for Loose Skin Chef today. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. So, I was actually going to add to my position, but I never did. But I believe got to be in this stock around 14, so probably broke even. I want to get rid of this thing, though. I want to get rid of this company. Probably sell that off today. Barrick Gold, 1888, 1886. Wow, that's awesome. Barrick has continued to run. We're going to take a look at the charts for Barrick. I flipped bullish on Barrick when they announced they weren't going to buy New Mount Mining. And uh, I really like that. They're going to just work together. That would have been massive dilution for Barrick. Ceneva's in the green, Turquoise Hill, Resources, needs to keep going down. Bell, continuing to gain. Canadian Utilities. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, sure, we'll take a look in a sec. Alifia Health down to 196. Leafy Health just moved up to the top of our watch list. Superior Plus Corp. Let's take a look at that too. I'll have to send that email very shortly about Gluskin Chef. I'm going to send it right now. Give me two seconds, guys. Gluskin. 28%. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I streamed on sa I streamed on Sunday. Hironaka is in the room. Thanks, man. Happy to see you here. I streamed on Sunday and I had an extremely late night last night with gym, work, lots of stuff, but the grind never stops. The streams never stop. And I'm just happy to be here because uh, I got my tea, I got my coffee. So anyways, um, I'll take a look at some stocks now. First, I'll look at MSIG, then I'll look at the other ones you guys were talking about. Um, and then we're going to, oh my gosh, Barrick is just like on fire, up another 3%. I'm sorry to get distracted, guys, but I just, I'm happy to see Barrick pushing. I think this is going to be our push at 20 bucks a share. I've been waiting a long time for this. I think we're finally see gold. 
we're finally seeing gold miners come out of this crappy rut. So, what do you think of Pierre today? New Jersey votes of marijuana today, MacArthur Minerals. Okay, so yeah, we definitely got a couple stocks to look at. Um, so you wanted me to look at MSIG. Quickly look at MSIG. I know MSIG made a huge bounce. What is that noise? Is something playing? Sorry guys. I apologize if there's some background noise in there. I don't know what the heck happened. Yeah, so MSIG made that bounce on high volume, which is pretty good. Quite substantial volume. I remember the day that DG called that because we saw the RSI drop like crazy. Literally this day, we saw the RSI plunge and then the stock just exploded. So that was a fantastic call on that bounce. <laughs> What's up, Perry Lung? Um, is there lots of background noise in my stream? I don't see any sounds going on in the tabs here, so. It might just be my air or something. And then it's obviously the the music that I got playing here. But MSIG, I'm not too sure right now, but it looks like, you know, we saw a nice little bounce. I don't know. The charts look pretty good for MSIG. I'd have to do more research on the company, but I pretty much know what they do. $71 million market cap. Okay, that's good. It's definitely one to watch for sure, but not on not on my watch list just because I'm not looking to buy U.S. stocks. I'm looking for, because I don't want to convert more CAD to USD, but no, MSIG looks pretty, it looks pretty cheap right now, actually. So, could be the bulls of Aurora. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, moving on to the next company. I believe it's MMS. Yeah, you guys like that meme? Let's cl we'll close a couple of these tabs real quick. Centric Health. This is like one of the only penny stocks that I've found within the retirement sector. Centric Health. We'll look at it a little bit closer later. Man, Alifia Health's looking good. Alifia Health's looking cheap. Okay, MacArthur Minerals up another 45%. This stock is on fire. Like I said, uh, I thought it was really great news what, what happened. I forget what it was, like a five-year billion dollar deal or something. What are good gold stocks to invest in and do di do due diligence in? Sure, so that's a great question. We'll take a look at that. I love talking about miners. Yeah, and then we'll also, uh, I looked at drone delivery a week or two ago, but let's get into, so I do have a portfolio of like my mine of all the mining stocks that I'm watching. I am not into MMS. I'm not into MMS at all, but um, I'm into IMT. But IMT hasn't really done too much recently. It's pretty much flat. I wonder how Belmont Resources has done after they announced that deal. It's down 11%. Trading around four, four and a half cents. Not too much volume going on there. So anyways, precious metal miners. So these are the ones that I'm following. And uh, what's up? What's up, Brownie? That's hilarious. Um, why am I not in MMS? I just didn't buy into the hype. But I definitely think like it's good news. I just 
the I found out about MMS like when it was up a hundred percent, so that's why. What's up, my? I know. <laughs> I kind of got it. I kind of got. It. What do you think about Agriflora? Lots of hype right now. We'll look. We'll get. Uh, we'll look back at cannabis stocks in just two seconds. Don't worry, Brownie. I, I get the joke. I get the joke. Just trying to keep this stream politically correct. <laughs> so, anyways. Stocks I'm watching for the gold mining space. So, Bear Gold, Gold Corp, Kinross. Um, Bear Gold, Gold Corp, Kinross. Also, why is Alamos not on the list? This is a different portfolio. So also watching Almos Gold, Yamana Gold. What else we got here? First Mining Gold. This is one I'm watching for sure too. They're a great Canadian miner, diversified within Canada. Do your, do your research and due diligence. And if you want to look up this company, just go First Mining. Keith Newmeyer. Departures Capital. And then you can see... We did an interview with him, so it's like, it's 20 minutes long, but he talks all about the company and what they're up to, so he, there's a ton of YouTube interviews, actually, lots of great stuff. He founded First Quantum, First Majestic, and First Mining Gold, so he's a pretty crazy guy, in, industry veteran, super knowledgeable, so check that out. Where, where I'm from, everyone calls their... <laughs> Okay, got you, got you. Where are you from, Brownie? Where are you from? Good morning, Remy Red. What's up? We're seeing lots of we're seeing lots of nice green for gold today. Oh, this is what I like to see with Barrick in the lead. Brampton. <laughs> yes, sir, Brampton. Nice. Give me some Toronto slang. I need some Toronto slang to make me uh, to make me smile. I follow Six Buzz, so Six Buzz has got some hilarious stuff. Bull trap day on the MJ market. Yeah, we're down 0.5% now. Nasdaq's down 0.8%. Dow's down 0.5%. So it's another red day. Utes, mandem. Waste man. <laughs> How did this? <laughs> Such a waste man right now. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> yeah, eh? It's friggin' hilarious. I don't know why first mining's in the in the red today. Let's check here. Also looking to pick up some first quantum minerals. First quantum is kind of going sideways right now. Copper is not really, copper is not really catching uh, as much of a bounce as gold is. Obviously, let's take a quick look at the copper futures. Pretty much flat, and the U.S. dollar pulling back just mildly. And the U.S. 10-year. Are you looking at Apple stock? Unfortunately not. I'm not looking at any tech stocks right now. I'm underweight completely on tech. Concerned about... Concerned about growth. And Alibaba's pulled back substantially. The only tech stocks we own right now are Alibaba, Tencent. I think that's it. Sold JD.com. Tencent's been holding in there pretty well. I don't even like American tech. The only tech stocks we own probably are some of those crypto stocks, which perform like crap. And then uh, HBLK, which holds like a bunch, which has probably not performed that well. Oh, it's performed pretty well, actually. Holy crap. 
It's because the some of those beat up crypto miners have been going back up, but man, this thing's actually recovered quite substantially. It's bounced off of five bucks, but it, probably because it's got a lot of heavy weighting in tech. Some other YouTubers said that MJ will be a hedge play during a recession. I have a question. Who said that? Like, what other YouTubers? I mean, I agree with them in a sense, but at the same time, it's a highly speculative growth, highly speculative growth sector. So, I haven't really tuned into his channel, Dan the Chart Dude, but... In a sense, it'll be, yes, it'll be a hedge, but not like a utility company. Marijuana stocks are not at the point where they're stable, paying dividends. It's still a growth sector, and it's one of those sectors that could potentially perform well during a recession. I, I mean, I'd rather own a cannabis stock than a tech stock, but I'd rather own a utility stock than a cannabis stock during a recession. That's just my opinion. Pelts will have Linton fetching his morning coffee and paper soon. Sure hope so. Yeah, so obviously there's conf there's conflicting opinions. But my opinion is, you know, just look at history. Let's just do one quick comparison here, so... Now this is not a recession, but this comparison is not a recession, but let's just let's just compare one thing real quick here. Just wanna pull something up here. Okay, so we're gonna use this pullback as an example. So there's the pullback we saw in two thousand late two thousand eight and the rally in two thousand nine. And uh, we're gonna use HMMJ as a comparison. And then, so this is a great idea to gauge the index, whatever. And then, so we're also going to use another ETF, XLU, Utility Select Sector SPDR. This is a utilities index, right? So, all right, if you guys can understand this chart, so... When the market sold off late 2008, we saw the cannabis sector plunge much lower than the overall markets. And we saw the utility sector remain a defensive. It's pretty defensive. Like it didn't plunge as much as the overall markets did. The overall markets plunged about 13%. Utility sector plunged about 6%. And um, currently the utility sector is outperforming the overall markets by about 4 to 5%. Meanwhile, the cannabis sector has outperformed the markets. It started to diverge after about a month into the rally, and now we're up 18% versus the market being 2% in the green. So the next pullback, what do I think is going to happen? Pullback, recession. I think this gap's going to narrow. So... Cannabis stocks are going to pull back if the market continues to pull back. As you guys can see, the market's pulled back maybe 2%. Cannabis sectors pulled back like 8%. So as we get closer, we can see that gap's gonna, that gap starting to narrow. But... What I think is, this is a gauge of the overall sector. Now we're gonna see individual companies that are gonna perform better. So like you said, those US plays, or stocks that are international. If a stock can show growth during a recession, yeah, like it's gonna, that's why, like I said, I'd rather hold a cannabis stock than a tech stock. If the, if the market's going down and uh, that kind of stuff so anyways guys that's just my two cents definitely good volatility
Large cap, can you please? Will fall with SPY due to being on both exchanges. Yeah. Catherine Woods saying it goes to 4K per share in the future. Which company? Oh, for like Tesla, 4K per share? Tesla at 250 has been looking pretty good. I mean, I'm not a big buyer. I'm not, just not yet, I guess for me, but who knows when's, when's the right time. I think Tesla could continue to fall if we see the market sell off a little bit more. But this is definitely, looks like a, 250 looks like a great time to pick up Tesla if you're trying to catch a bounce, do a swing trade. Even a long position in Tesla, if, if I wasn't so bearish on the markets, 250 looks like a decent time to go long, but I'm just fairly bearish right now. What's up, Max? What's up, Max? Did you send me a message? Sorry, man, I didn't really check Facebook except for this meme. Which is pretty, pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Gold is on the rise. RNX is on the rise. And I also wanted to say thanks, guys. 120 people in here. Like, uh, my streams never used to get this many people. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that I'm providing you guys with a decent update, some entertainment, some valuable <laughs> information. <laughs> That's my goal. Sorry, buddy. I'll check the messages like as soon as I get off the stream or whatever. Please look at K92 mining. K92 mining. So, anyways, um, first we'll take a quick look at RNX. RNX is actually looking pretty good right now. Hopefully we see a nice little spike, eh, Max? Back up to like 75 cents. Yeah, RNX is looking pretty good right now. Maybe I'll pick up some RNX today. Hopefully it goes back up for you. $68 on RNX? Damn, Max, you're killing it. Big gains, big gains. Let's close off a couple, excuse me, let's close off a couple of these tabs. So yeah, Tesla looking pretty good today. Gluskin Chef crushing it up 28%. Kind of want to sell this bad boy and get rid of it. Yeah, I forget when I got, when I bought this thing. Hopefully in the green by now. Look at that crappy chart though, my gosh. MacArthur Minerals up 35%. Second day of huge gains. T for everyone, so are we buying back so are we buying back in ACB? <clears throat> Excuse me, not just yet. Not just yet. Don't really have any plans to uh Add to ACB right now at 12 bucks. <sighs> yeah, I don't know right now for ACB personally. Like, I mean, it, a, like a 1170 looks like a pretty good entry point. It's just annoying yeah. because I'm still, I I still think the markets will fall more. So I don't want to buy the chart based on what I'm thinking. I'm not really looking to add that much growth right now. It's such a tough call. If, if the S&P 500 was like at 2650 right now, I'd be like, oh, ACB, let's do it. But it's not. Man. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Yep. 
yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of my thoughts. Ideally, ideally, what I would like to see is I like to see the markets get stuck. I like to see the markets get stuck in a in a specific trading range, like if you guys if you guys see right here. I would love to see the markets even sell off to like 27, 27, 30 retest these, this dip that we saw trade sideways. Cause the markets moved up so fast. I'd like to see a little bit more volatility to the downside. Only thing I'm scared about in cannabis market is the oversupply gut that will eventually happen. It's inevitable, eventually, but I think we're still a couple years out, hopefully. That's why investing in companies with a global growth strategy is, is key. So that's why I like KCB. Haven't looked at JWCA for a while. Thanks for pointing that out, though. James E. Wagner has been on fire recently. Finally pulling back. Internet connection back up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I just bought some at a dollar. ACB. We just took a look at ACB. Treading water at 12 bucks. Not adding right now, Joe. Not adding right now. Just watching. Basically, you know, I was I was doing some thinking on ACB. I was doing some really hard thinking about ACB. And uh, I think personally, I want to like, I might want to add one or two more times if the price is right, which is going to be hard to determine when the price is right. I'd need to see it pull back a little bit more. And then once, if and when they get a partnership deal, then it's just going to be a long-term hold for me. And then my next, my next big winners or bets, I guess, MedMen, Ceneva, um, Crop, Safe, those kind of stocks. Yeah, 1170, 1150 to 1170 on ACB looks like a compelling entry point. But I remember back when the stock tanked from like 16 all the way down to 6, I was adding at 10 and then it went even lower to 6. Um yeah, MedMen looks pretty interesting right now, especially with that $250 million investment that they just got. So that's uh, one big positive. That's what, what moved this stock up 40, at least 40 cents. So just bought water. Did that with T-God. Um, how long do you think legalization in the States? I don't really know, but I hope they do it. A year? Less? I'm bullish on I'm bullish on the US market. That's literally the only companies I've been investing into. Medmen, Ceneva, Crop. Um Safe is not one. Yeah, Medmen, Ceneva, Crop, pretty much. I never got Enbev and I never got water. Still watching water. Let's take a look, see what we're at today. I don't know. I just think it's going to like 340. I just really think that we're going to retest those lows that we saw when the stock sold off all the way down to about 340, whatever it hit that one day because they issued 4 million shares. That's why the stock gapped down so drastically. Yep. 
Definitely, uh, definitely torn about ACB, but like at the same time, the pullback makes sense. What's up, the Elephant Geek? Thank you for tuning in. MYT is nice, China. Let's take a look at MYT. Urban tea? Yeah, MacArthur Minerals on fire again. Um, so, wow. $60 million market cap. Let's see what this company does. It's traded on the NASDAQ. I calculated how many people are in legal recreational marijuana states alone. 89 million people, 2.5 times Canada's population. It's a good market. Okay, so. Delta Technology Holdings. Chemical manufacturer which is engaged in manufacturing and selling organic compounds, PCT, OCT, unsaturated polyester resin, malic acid, and other byproduct chemicals. That's, uh, wow. Dye and pigments, aerospace, ceramics, coating, printing, clean energy, and food additives. Infrastructure materials such as anti-collision pipes and oil and gas pipelines. Wow, that's uh, that's quite the company. That company has had quite the run. I don't like to buy charts like this because it looks like there's a ton of hype, but that sounds like a very, very interesting company. Thanks for pointing it out. Um, it's just unfortunate that didn't catch this one before it had a tremendous like well over 100% run <laughs> toxic yeah yeah i only trade my lira how do you how do profits get taxed in a regular trading account a eh? they get taxed like uh, capital gains capital gains tax yeah you you're smart to trade in a lira in a lira or in a tfsa and if you're investing in highly speculative stocks like cannabis stocks where you've got the potential to make a crap load of money, then trading in a lira is a very smart idea. <laughs> urban tea. <laughs> I know. Dude, that's hilarious. Who chose the name Urban Tea? I, I mean, it's kind of funny though. Makes sense. Oh, all right, guys. So ACB's holding on to 12 bucks. I need to get some coffee going here. And doing a, do a tea shot. ACB stock, what do you think? Hello, Shannon. Thank you for tuning into my stream. If you guys are new to the stream, let me just quickly post up the link in the chat to the Discord group. We've got almost 400 members. So I'm trying to grow the group to 400 members. It's 24-hour chat all about the stock market. Um, so feel free to join. My thoughts on ACB. I'm just watching it. But I do like, I do like just below 12 bucks. Although I'm kind of bearish on the market. So I feel like, you know, could, you could add it. You could add if it dips below 12, but if the whole market's going lower, I think ACB is going lower too, so it's hard to say. Kiran over 48 North. Yeah, if I was buying a if I was buying a hype stock, I mean I I like to call them hype stocks, but stocks that have had r nice runs recently. Let's compare those two. You know, that's actually a really great comparison. Coffee with two drops of CBD. Uh, Derek, Derek, do you know if like you put the coffee or if you put the CBD in your coffee, does it work as good as putting it underneath your tongue? Because like when I first tried CBD, I put it underneath my tongue. I'm not buying whole market, including Canadian banks, all in the red, just like last December crash. What's up? Which better stock or opinion? So we're, we're going to compare 
So yeah, the CB dro CBD drops actually worked very well. I got the 600 milligram bottle, 30 mils. And the first time I tried them, I put three quarters of a full dropper underneath my tongue for two to three minutes. And it was pretty potent actually. I was really relaxed, felt, felt great, but I went to the gym like 30 minutes after that and I was almost too relaxed. When I parked my car, I parked it like sideways. So <laughs> you might, you might wanna, if you're looking to, to try some CBDs, <clears throat> the 600 milligrams, pretty potent already. And uh, I would say probably about a third to half a dropper. And it's better after the gym. My, my goal with the CBDs is to take it after the gym for relaxation, recovery, all that kind of stuff. Because that's what my buddy who's really into fitness said. It's okay, Norbert. Just take a little less. Do like a, a, a quarter of the dropper. Or like, it all depends. But everybody's different, right? Like, my friend who tried them yesterday told me that he felt fine. But he just felt relaxed and it took away his appetite. So... Everybody kind of reacts different to them. Uh, so, okay, so I just want to compare 48 North to Kiron. Kiron's. Yeah, so let's do the one year chart. Why can't we compare the one year chart? We'll zoom in a little closer. Okay, so. Kiron's definitely outperformed 48 North by a long shot. Both charts look very similar. But if I was looking at, like I said, some hype stocks, I mean, I like the fact that Kiron has exposure to an, an international market, aka South America, versus another Canadian producer. Yes, it is in Colombia, however, they are professional MG growers growing this stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, Danny boy. So, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you say you would buy ACB under 12 bucks? Aaron was there about. Personally, I want to see what the market does first. <clears throat> one th sorry, one thing I'm trying to hopefully show you guys I know every day we look at the cannabis sector but I want you guys to, to to look at the charts if you study so many charts for the cannabis sector and don't look at the overall market I think that's something that you need to do you need to keep your eyes on the S&P 500 because it doesn't matter how compelling or good looking the chart is for a specific company if the market's going to roll over, the chances of that company performing are just are just not as high as if the S&P was neutral to bullish. Right? So right now I'm cautious on the overall market which completely changes my outlook for all cannabis stocks. What are we talking about? Quida. Quida. <laughs> yes, guys, we still have 20 minutes left in this stream. That's what I like to see. We're going to stream at least till 11. But ACB is in the green. Markets. Markets holding on. Exactly, Aaron. If I see major indicators, S P five hundred, Nasdaq, T S X, Dow Jones Industrial Average go green at least half a percent, I will buy me some A C B. Yes, exactly. But the last thing I want you guys to do is start to buy cannabis stocks when all signals on the stock market are flashing red, and uh, you're buying on a red day. But the red day is just going to turn into more red days. I mean, you got to look at the overall picture, right? Cannabis. Cannabis is not untouchable. 
That's all I'm saying. Gold's having a nice run today, 1327. I got out of the pot stock. Don't trust him now. I'll wait for the big crash. Then I'll get back in. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, guys, I'd say the recent stocks, in terms of the stocks that I've purchased since September. Sorry, September. December until, until present day. 80 to 85 percent of all those purchases were utility companies, long-term healthcare, retirement funds, precious metal mining stocks, and 15 percent cannabis stocks. Like I picked up Crop Safe, MedMen, Ceneva. What else? No more. I didn't add any ACB, but those kind of things. So. Anywho, preparing for a recession. I mean, I'm just building a dividend portfolio with some exposure to risk, like some exposure to the cannabis stocks, but yeah. Excuse me. Transalta, stock's been running. I saw it run from seven to almost 10 bucks. That it's kind of annoying right now. <laughs> div, 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 div time. <laughs> Look at that run for Trans Alta Corp. Five bucks, almost to ten. Man, I was looking at this stock around seven bucks. Didn't buy into it because the dividend was crap. But that's a nice run. Morning, y'all. What's up, Chuck? Chuck, just Chuck. How much do you have to invest to live off of just dividends? That's a good question. Depends on your cost of living, but and and also your. Uh, but if you just use nice, clean, round numbers, a million bucks is a million bucks. If you can achieve a five percent yield, which is kind of pushing it. Four and a half to five percent yield investing into some great companies right now. You're looking at obviously like forty five to fifty grand a year. Hundred and forty five K gives you one K a month. Uh I think you're right. What's that? One It's a seven point five percent yield. Depends on what you invest in. Yeah, like if you want to take a risk and you want to buy into a bunch of different REITs, you can definitely get 7%. So like a million bucks is going to get you 70 grand a year. Yes, sir. Enbridge. I like Enbridge too. We I own a lot of Enbridge. Probably my biggest position in the energy sector. Pays a nice yield too, 6%. 6% even today. Northwest Healthcare, love the stock. Bought that probably five or six times so far this year. All I've been doing is adding to Northwest Healthcare. Love that stock. 6.8% today. So the stocks ran actually pretty substantially. Like it's moved up off ten bucks. We're at eleven and a half now, so the the yield dropped a bit. Yeah, hundred percent. Banks would definitely get uh, banks would definitely get crushed during recession. I've sold off pretty much every financial stock that I've owned, sold Bank of America, TD, Manny Life, Manny Life US Regional Bank Trust. Only stock I have left, First National Bank, which is performing pretty good recently actually. Although it's down another half a percent today, but it's yielding 
0.27%. I'm just looking to potentially get rid of First National and switch this for a higher dividend paying stock. So if I sell First National and put it into Northwest Healthcare Properties, that might be a better alternative because we're yielding 6.8% or BPY, we'll see what BPY is yielding or BTB Real Estate Trust, that's another one, 6.37%. BTB Real Estate Trust, this is not a bad one. It's yields 8.66%, so I like I like the yield on that one, that's for sure. But yeah, potentially looking to make a few changes today. I'm gonna go in about 10 minutes and jump on the phone. Jump on the phone with my pops. Talk to him about what he thinks about, about, those, about those moves. <laughs> Last yield was Northwest Healthcare was eight hundred sixty-eight dollars. But yeah, I think there's there's certain stocks like Kiran that stock's held on pretty well. Could continue to go up, and the market cap's still relatively very small. Brookfield Asset Management Incorporated, bam, bam. That's the ticker symbol. <laughs> Bam. Brookfield Asset Management just bought, uh, I forget what company it was. It's got a cool name. It's got a cool name to it. It was a billion dollar deal. The only thing about Brookfield is it's one of the pricier Brookfields. One point three five percent. See, Brookfield right now, it's just it's looking a little pricey for me. If I was looking at a if I was looking at a Brookfield right now, I'd be looking at I'd be looking at Brookfield Renewables. Brookfield Renewables looks also a little pricey, or BPY. I like BPY right now. BRE looks pretty interesting. Brookfield Real Estate Services. There's so many though. It's hard to say. What do you think of Kronos right now? Up eight percent earnings on Friday. And this China deal actually goes through, then it could, then this. Yeah. Teacup forming in RNX. Cup and handle on Kiron. Honestly, guys, I think the markets, they have a, they have some more tricks up their sleeve. Like, they're probably going to come out with some positive news about the trade war. But once the markets pop on trade war optimism, if we can fix the trade war, it's tough to say where it's going to go. I'm keeping some cash on the side for when the trade war positive news comes out. And some of those safe stocks sell off. I'm just going to buy more of them. <laughs> if if there's optimism on the trade war, we see some kind of agreement and financials pick their stocks back up for a short-term rally, I'm going to sell the rest of my financials and just keep buying more of these defensive dividend payers. That's all. I could care less about what happens to the markets like I mean I want the markets to go up a little bit more but I just want to get that trade war announcement over with because once that's over with I don't think there's much steam left for the markets pure global cannabis ticker symbol pure Peered up pure back down to 20 cents. I traded pure only one time. I lost on pure in my personal account, but I made it all back up 
in a different account. <laughs> My 25k in Northwest Healthcare has been treat treating me good with their dividends. Yes, sir. The banking deal for cannabis would be huge. Solar battery stocks? Depends. Cobalt, nickel, lithium, I like those. And uh, yeah, Carl Carlton Gonzalez. Yeah, Northwest Healthcare Properties. I give them two thumbs up. That's one stock I've been following for the last like six months probably. Talk, been talking about it, been buying it. Probably gonna buy some more of it. Probably today. No, but t -God has hundreds of millions of cash. They're building an organic brand development is a key cannabis industry. Mm. So many things to think about. Let's see here. Lithium, lithium, lithium. I want to look at Namaska lithium. Yeah, Namaska lithium hasn't really moved that much. Turquoise Hill, slightly in the green today, up 0.9%. This is one I want to pick up cheap and hold for the long term. Bearing up today. Are we talking about bearing or bowing? <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a green day so far. Good morning, Aaron just got here. What was your ACB news? Thank you so much for tuning in, Joe. I appreciate the $2 in the super chat. We were just taking a look at ACB. And then of course, if any news comes out, then we'll be first to it. I don't think there's any new ACB news though. Uh, let's see, ACB stock news. Let's see if there's any recent articles for the stock. No, March 24th, March 22nd. 17 hours ago. Here's what five analysts think about Aurora Cannabis. This article was put out yesterday. And this was put out five hours ago. Whether you're an existing or prospective investor in Aurora Cannabis, it can be nice to get Wall Street analysts' opinion where they think the stock is headed. We pretty much know what they think. It's amazing though, BMO Capital Markets is $10 price target, seriously? How outdated is that? Cowan & Co, 14 bucks. GMP Securities, 15 bucks. CAC Ingenuity, 13 bucks. Combine the five analyst price targets, a consensus of twelve eighty per share. Isn't that funny how the price targets at twelve eighty? Ten billion dollar market cap. They need to come down before I go in. Nelson Peltz needs to make a deal. Yes, that's definitely what we need to see. The real sleepers. Afria does. Afria has two point six million square feet of growing space. Afria, definitely, like I said, for Afria, lots of quality assets, but management's like, I'm just not too sure about management. So, like, with better direction, I think the company can be, can be an awesome, but Afria's a little more speculative for me. It's either a buyout target or they need to get their act together a little bit. That's all it comes down to is direction and management, I think. But Afria has got the assets. And fairly undervalued to its peers. The NDC started turning green. Yes, sir. Nice to see DC getting over 1K views per video now. I know, right? Oh, shoot. You know what, guys? Like, it's nice to see my streams are consistently getting 100 people. Um, but I wanted to say 
quickly here. We're almost at 13k subs. We're 25k subs away. So that's a pretty nice accomplishment, but my one video, my one video, the best video on my channel so far, 18k views one week ago, is Aurora going to 20 bucks. So if you guys haven't checked it out, it's actually a pretty good analysis in there. So I kind of, kind of predicted it, but um, yeah, so that was a milestone for me. Have never done a close to 20k video before, so. Let's see what we got here. Chrono Balot, so laggy today. It is, is it my connection? Are you doing collabs anymore, Rich TV? Yeah, I should get back on the collabs. Thanks for, uh, thanks for talking about that. We've just been so busy, like, grinding, doing our daily streams, Market Minute video, my other videos. Maori? <laughs> no, these are just normal tats. Um, it's just a, it's just a rose. <laughs> but it's like a solid piece. But yeah, guys, so it's a 10.59. I'm just going to quickly recap everything. So at the end of my streams, I like to recap everything. I'm going to recap everything. Quickly going to post that link to, to the Discord group also. But we're not leaving yet, so don't worry. Don't worry. Bam. Link's in the description. Check out the Discord group if you guys haven't joined yet. Almost at 400 members. So, <clears throat> all right, so first I'm going to close a couple of these tabs and then we will just quickly recap everything for you guys. Then I'm going to head out and let you guys know if we made any trades today, but definitely going to be making some trades, probably selling Gluskin Chef and First National Bank, probably going to be buying Northwest Healthcare Properties and another high yielding stock, potentially some of those copper stocks too. I like when these articles come out though. Two super safe dividend stocks. Nope. I'm definitely not gonna buy Microsoft. Nope. All right. So, get out of here. S&P 500 treading water at 2,800. Um, what else we got here? Nothing really new in terms of the headlines. In terms of commodities, we're seeing crude down almost 1%. Gold, silver in the green. Gold's having a nice green day. Barrick's having a nice green day. Let's take a quick look at the cannabis sector. Weed stocks, weed stocks. There we go. Biggest gainer on the day, Can America Brands up 24%. Holy crap. <laughs> Liberty Leaf. Up another 9%, so that's doing all right. Kronos is looking pretty strong. NBEV having a green day up 2.7%. Didn't manage to fall below 5 bucks. T God up 2.5%. ACB is in the green now, up 1.5%. Mad Men up 1.3%. We're seeing a lot more decliners now. Even Co. Cali. Zanabas Pure Global Cannabis 48 North. Tilt. Selling off again 3%. ACB is another one of those stocks you want to have something in it. But now I am holding to get back in at the moment. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's the thing. ACB is the one stock that I'll never sell the whole position. <laughs> you guys are you guys are funny. I know. Well, I mean everybody has everybody has their opinion. Everybody likes a company. There's always a good 
side and a bad side to every company like there's there's lots of negatives to say about Aurora there's lots of positives to say about Aurora obviously some companies have a lot more negatives but yeah everybody's entitled to their opinion so that's cool guys as long as as long as it doesn't end in a big fight <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I'm just going to recap uh, two more portfolios. So I want to look at a copper portfolio. Copper portfolio, Rio Tinto's in the green today. Turquoise Hill up 1.3%. Copper Mountain Mining. This is another one I'm looking at. And it's dropping another 3%. So that's pretty good. I do like to buy on the red days. That's why I bought at 12. I sold it all last week. So FYI, I sold my last position in a free at 14, 1402. So I no longer have a free. Made really good money off of Freya though. Freya was one of the biggest winners actually. <laughs> Namaste getting bought by Amazon at $4.50. What's up, Doc? I hope that we, uh, I hope that happens. <laughs> That'd be sweet. All right, so guys, Micron Waste Technologies down 5%. Ooh, this is one I'm looking at too, along with Alifia Health. IQ down 3.84%. Kirkland Lake Gold. I never bought the hype on Kirkland Lake Gold. Like, See, if I would have bought this thing, oh, it's going to 50 bucks. Shoot, well, it's not. It didn't. But it is having a nice little pullback, so. But I don't like to buy charts at 52 week highs. Keep dropping water. 361. Let's keep going a little bit lower, please. All right. Sounds like you are day trading, so you'll be all right, Daniel. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 13 different canvas companies. Before I go, Daniel, do you want to do you want to let me know what you what you what you've got? Just so uh, well, it's up to you. If you don't want to share, it's cool. Just want to know what you're looking at. I like to see what my peoples are buying. You obviously don't have to disclose like positions, amounts, or whatever. But like, just let me let us know some of the companies that you're looking at. It's always a nice way to chat. P and G. Procter and Gamble. <laughs> See, I was bullish on U.S. consumer um, consumer staples, but I don't like the yield. It's just not enough for me to justify the valuations of these companies. They're they're sky high. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not buying Procter & Gamble at 52-week all-time highs, yielding 2.8%. So that's a, that's a tough one. This stock's higher than it's ever been. 2.8%'s not a big enough yield for me. But I'm not talking bad about this stock, Shannon. Okay, like... Uh, these stocks earnings won't get hit as hard if we go into a recession, whatever. I just, uh, I'd rather own a utility co, but utility co's are also valued really high too. So it's hard to say, but I would be, I am more bullish on the consumer staple sector than other sectors. I just feel like utility sector still has a little bit better of a defensive aspect, a little bit higher of a dividend yield. 
Like I'd rather own energy codes than PNG probably. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the stream. I'm gonna do it one more time. So we're gonna post the link to the Discord group one more time. It's there in the chat. Feel free to join if you want. But for now, I'm going to head out. So if we've got time, we'll do another afternoon stream and you're gonna see the link posted on uh, YouTube. So you'll get the notifications if we do a 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. stream. So other than that, guys, it was a pleasure, as always. <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button, and uh, thank you so much. So, have a good day, guys.